And we're live. Hey, we're live. Hey, 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 hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Luke, and I will be your teacher for this live English class. If you're watching this later and this is over, I'm sorry, you missed it. Wow, that's sad. That's very, very sad. But you can catch the next one if you are an English learner and you want to ask questions and learn some English, pick up some useful tips for improving your spoken English, then make sure you follow and subscribe because that's the way to do it. If you don't do that, then you have no way to know when the live streams are happening. That's how you know. Let's see what else. Oh yes, if you haven't already, I would appreciate it if you could hit the like button. If you don't have a thumb, then use your finger. If you don't have fingers, use your nose. If you don't have a nose, use your toes. If you don't have toes, who knows? And it sounded like I wrote that, but I just made it up. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Let's see what else. Uh, also, I have full courses if you're interested in improving your spoken English or your written English. Uh, as you can see from this view, I'm going to be doing some stuff on my computer here. I can pop up to this as well. Hey! Uh, and uh, uh, if you want to learn more seriously, check out those links. It's in the description. You can check out the links. Get a discount, 20% discount, on my full courses on my website. Uh, just click on the... might not be the first link, might be the second link. It's the Luke, Luke Pretty one. Once you click on that, check out my courses. You can preview the first two lessons for free, which is what preview means, and then decide if it's right for you. If it is, buy it. Use your money and buy it and improve your English even more. And that is it. All right. So today, what are we going to do? Well, I have something interesting to show you, in particular, if you're an English learner and you struggle with the problem of getting excited about learning, I'm so excited and I'm going to learn, but then you give up several days later because you lost focus, I'm going to help you solve that problem in a really fun way. I'm going to give you one possible solution to that problem, which I think you might find is interesting. And then, as we usually do, I'm going to answer your questions whether it be culture questions, grammar questions, pronunciation questions, word differences questions, phrase differences questions, the meaning of life, whatever it happens to be. Fatima, I'm disappointed. Picture, books, and image. You usually give me a huge list. So few? I don't think we can even include that in the playlist. So few. I'm, I, frankly, I'm disappointed. Quite frankly, quite frankly, I'm disappointed. Fatima, you're usually... Fatima, where's the list? Where's my list? L uh, Lolly Lolly's here. Welcome. I'm going to drink some... I think this stuff is called water. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but it's great. It's really good. It's very healthy. And... Um, you're supposed to drink some every day. This is actually my first time trying it. I usually just drink coffee. This is my first time drinking water. Hmm. I see why people like it. It's not bad. I think I understand why people are into it. I feel like I could drink it once in a while. I'm listening to Amigo, the devil right now. So good, especially his song... Cocaine and Abel. Okay, cool. Casey Master. I don't really listen to much music, but I'm glad that you do. You can listen to music for the both of us. I usually only listen to music when I'm working and I need to focus, and but it usually doesn't have words. Lolly Lolly says, I'll never give up learning English or even, even if I struggle a lot. That's good. Good attitude. I like it. I like it a lot. Good attitude. Paulson. Hi, Luke. Hello, Paulson. Good day to you, sir. Now, as you guys might have seen earlier on, I'm switching over back and forth sort of between this view and this view. 
I might be doing that because what we're going to look at involves me showing you something. Although, uh, uh, unlike the last one, we're not going to be doing video games exactly, although it is game-like, and you will see what I'm talking about. It is actually my favorite app. So get your questions ready, guys, and uh, and let's maybe get into our main topic for today. What do you think? You're welcome, Lolly Lolly. Jamal, hello. What do you like? What do you like, Jamal? What is it that you like? Okay. So, get your questions ready. Pop them in the chat. I'll review them after I go over this thing. So, one of the big problems that English language learners face, in fact, language learners of any kind face, is the problem of difficulty. Now, this might not be true for everybody. Maybe this is not you. Maybe you never give up. You're dedicated. Great. Congratulations. But I have to say, for many people, here is one common issue. I'm so excited to improve my English. I'm very motivated. Yeah, very excited. And then a week later, now I'm excited about something else. I've lost my interest. I've lost my focus. I didn't stay on track. And now I, I feel disappointed in myself. I hate myself. No, not that much. Hopefully you don't hate yourself. That's not good. Don't do that. But it is important to have a way to make yourself keep doing something that's important to you. So if you decide that learning English is important to you, that's the first decision, then you have to decide what you're going to do about that. You are irresponsible if you say, I'm excited about English, and then English later becomes something that disappears, and you thought that was important to you, and then it's gone now. That's irresponsible. You're not doing it anymore. You gave up quickly. If you decide that it's important to you, you have to figure out how to make it stay in your life, how to build a lifestyle, how to have the right habits, how to stick with it. So what I'd like to do is introduce a tool that I use for more than just learning English, but that you can use to keep track of what you're doing, to motivate yourself and connect with your fellow learners. Now this is an app but there is a, a version on the internet that you can use, a web version, and an app version. Now, this tool is simply a checklist tool, but it's more than that. I'm sure you know checklist tools. There are apps everywhere for how to make a checklist, and I did this, 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 and this. Okay, you know about to-do lists. You know about checklists. So now you might be thinking, wait, don't tell me about that. I already know about checklists. I don't need to watch this video. Well, there's a little more to it than that. There's a lot more to it than that. I want to talk you through this, this app, this website, and I want to show you how you can track different aspects of your English language learning journey to begin with, and then you might think about using this for other aspects of your life too. I use it for many different things. Now this is called Habitica. It's called Habitica. Habitica. What is it? It is a gamified task manager. What is gamified? It means it makes managing tasks, doing things, to-do lists, checklists, it makes it like a game. You get points. You can buy clothes. You can, it's just like, a, just like a game. You can buy pets. You can keep track of your goals, of your habits, and of your to-dos. And I would recommend that you start with your English learning to-dos. And then if you're interested and it works for you, then add in your life to-dos and your life goals. Why not? Why not? So I'm hoping that we can start with English and then I can give you some ideas about how to use it beyond that. All right? So let's take a look at Habitica. Now, I am going to start with a, a new 
account so that you guys can see what this might look like from the beginning. I'm going to switch over to my desktop and then I'm going to zoom over here and you can see that we're in Habitica. Now I've started a new account. This is not my account. I'm a very high level in this. I'm super high level, legend level. <laughs> I've been using it for a long time. I like it because it reminds me of what I need to do, but it's not just to do's. I can have categories, including things I want to do every day, habits I want to keep, and things I need to finish, right? And I can place importance on those, which are worth points. Then I can track, for example, how much life I have, how much magic I have, and build out aspects of my little character, just like you would for a video game. As you play a video game, maybe an RPG, for example, you get clothes and you get money and you get stuff like that, okay? So this is cool. So here, here I'm being asked, and this, this is the interface, I'm being asked in Habitica to choose my body. Okay, I'll, choose, um, I'll choose that body and I'll choose a shirt. I'm going to choose a blue shirt. Um, skin, that I'm going to definitely be blue. Why not? Hair, I will go with that. Why is it making me a woman? Am I a woman? Am I a woman? Maybe I can't change. Maybe I'm a girl. All right, who cares? Whatever. I can add a wheelchair if I like. I can do all kinds of things. Okay, here's some different hairstyles. What's this? Okay, all right. Cool. Okay, so let's just choose this. Let's go with this for now. Now, notice it's this sort of stylized, the stylized way of doing it. I think it's pretty cool. Personally, I like it. I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. This is... This is my character. Now, my character in my uh, account is, he's got a lot of stuff. He's got a pet turkey. He's riding on a whale. He's got a huge golden crown. And you get this stuff by completing your daily tasks, by doing what you're supposed to do. It's awesome. I like it. Some people don't maybe don't like it. I think it's cool. You know, just because you're an adult doesn't mean you can't have a little fun and get done what you need to get done. I want to work on, okay, so I have some choices here. Uh, let's see. I want to work on work, and I want to work on school, and I want to work on self-care. What is self-care? Brushing my hair? What is that? Okay. All right. Here, here we are. I've filled out some tasks for you based on your interests so you can get started right away. Click a task to edit or add new tasks to fit your routine. Routine is what you do every day. Cool beans. Let's go. All right, now I'm way zoomed in just so you can see. Let me zoom way out just so you can see the whole thing. Now, this looks, I think, better on the phone version. So on the phone version, it's more vertical. Some people like to do it on the web, but it's cool that you can choose. You could do it on your phone. I usually do it that way. You can also do it... You can also do it uh, here, which is fine. Now, if we look at the different parts, there are three main sections here, and this is where it gets really interesting for your language learning habits, your language learning to-dos, your English learning to-dos, because normally you just have a to-do list, but here you're able to manage different types of things, habits, dailies, which means every day, and to-dos. Very important that there are three here. And this is the only one that I know that's like this. So let's go to my habits, okay? Now it's giving me some, some sample ones. It's filled them in for me. That's fine, that's fine. But let me, just, let me just add one. Now what would be a habit that I would wanna do as an English language learner? So let's say something that I wanna stick with, right? I could do it very specifically or I could do it very generally, okay? Let's say, generally speaking, I check uh, at, at least two English, I can't see what I'm writing here because my thing is in the way, news, news articles, okay? So check at least two English news articles, and then I hit enter, 
And there we go. Now, uh, let me add one more really quickly. Let me add one more really quickly. What le, what what else? Oh, we could we could be very specific. Let's say let's say a f now this is when you're getting really into it and you're paying attention to every single thing you say in English. I'm not saying you have to be this specific. Avoid saying z instead of z. <laughs> Now that's that might be too specific as a habit, but that's you could do all kinds of things like that that you want to continually do. So this is continual stuff. So that means when you click on these, it doesn't go away. It stays. And when you do one that you don't want, then it shows bad. So if I if I caught myself saying some or, or what would be a good one, um, this instead of this. Okay, I caught myself saying this. Oh no, I heard myself say this. Ah, when I go back, I check negative, minus. <gasps> it's turning orange. And notice, very cool, I lost some health points. Now I'm at 47 out of 50. Oh no. Oh, I did it again. I did it again. I did it again. I'm dying. Ah, but, but, if I start to do it again, I gain some magic skills. And the magic skills allow me, I found, to find new items. You can use these items to get pets. You can use the items to buy stuff, trade them for money, sell them. And then you can buy with your items more health, for example, if you're very low level. Or anything that you might imagine that would be in a regular video game. So let's say, for example, my health is extremely low because I've had some bad habits. And you have to really be honest with yourself. One cool thing I like about this app is that it forces you to be honest with yourself. You don't want to lie to yourself. It forces you to be accountable. So I say, OK, I, I'm almost dead. I don't want to lose my level. I'm level 5. I don't want to go down to level 4. I, I, I can't bear it. But I've saved up some money from selling items that I've found, completing my tasks on a regular basis. Good behavior gets good stuff, right? So maybe I go over here and I use my, my money. And when I say money, I don't mean you have to pay money. This is You can use this totally for free. There is a level where you get some stuff with a premium plan. I've never done that one. Then you can buy this, which is a health potion. That will then give you a full health bar. So if I bought that, and I don't think I have any money here, then it would take me up to full health over here. Over here, I would go back up to full health. Pretty cool. And you can see with my character, I, I, I look pretty boring now. But I, as I mentioned, you can buy all kinds of stuff, clothes, high level stuff. It's very cool. All right. So you got the minus and the plus. Now, some habits you might not want to punish yourself for. You only want to say when you did it. So for example, you could use this if you're trying to quit smoking. Did I did I uh, smoke today? I don't smoke, but just for example, okay? Maybe I set this goal so that, and you can edit all of these, so that there's no negative. I don't want there to be a negative, a minus. I only want to encourage myself. I don't want to punish myself, because maybe that's not good. So you don't click this, but when you had a full day, where you didn't smoke a cigarette, or you had a full day where you checked at least two English articles, you click on that. And then you get, what did I get? I, I, got some, I got some experience points. This is experience. And then as you get higher level, you get magic, magic powers. I got a little mixed up. The yellow is experience. The blue then is your magic powers, which you can use to fight monsters with other people. It's very cool. You can, you can actually team up with other people using this and add your points together to kill dragons and things like that and use your magic powers to do it. It's really cool. It's very cool. All right, now we have dailies. Okay, so let's take a look at dailies. All right, so I wanna do what every day? And you can set the frequency. So I'm just gonna use what they have here and you can replace this with any any task that you want. What do you want to do every day? Uh, maybe I want to answer answer a daily discussion question. Okay, that's what I want to do every single day. That's what I want to do every single day. I want to write two articles. 
but maybe I don't want to write two articles every single day because that's pretty intense. So I'll go into edit here and I will, I will, uh, maybe I can make some notes, set how difficult that is. And the difficulty is how many points you get. So if I set it as hard, then I get more points when I do that every day. Now I can set it like this. I can set, for example, to repeat on not every day, but maybe I want to do it twice a week. So then it'll bring it up twice a week for me to complete. If I did it, I can click yes, and then I get that many points. You can do daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly. There's a lot of customization you can do. And I use this for, for work a lot a lot of work-related stuff. I will keep track of things that I need to remember to do once or twice a month, once or twice a week, every day, all kinds of stuff. You can really do a lot with that. And if you do many, many in a row, it rewards you even more. You get more points and more stuff. And also pretty cool, you might say article on, uh, article on science, article on, article on, Bananas. <laughs> banana, my banana article. Yes, very important. Uh, very important. And then I will save that. And so I can see here then. Where's my where's my oh here over here. Now I now I can click on each of these. Okay, so on Monday I did that and Tuesday I did that. Right? I did these two and I completed it. And then haha! -ha, yes! What happened? Ah, level two! Yes! Level two, I reached level two. Amazing. Although, as you get higher and higher level, it gets harder and harder to level up. So it's easy to get to level two, but it is not easy to get to level, for example, I'm up in the 70s and 80s. It takes a long time to get to the next level. It gets harder and harder. So basically what we're doing here is we're turning the things that are important to us in our lives, including our English learning goals and we're making them a game. It's a constant reminder. It forces you to be accountable. It's fun and you can connect with others who are doing their own things to collaborate on shared tasks. It's really cool. Okay, next one. Next one, to do. Now this is just a to do. Okay. You can still do a list of things. For example, you need to finish several things before you, you get it, right? So you can go in here and do the edit and you can, uh, you can add a list. Uh, pizza, bananas, coffee. I don't know what kind of list this is, but it's a list. <laughs> Uh, thinking, let's let's call this thinking of food. I haven't eaten yet today, if you can tell. And then I want to make this medium difficulty and save, 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 save. All right. So now I have my to-dos here, and I can collapse it. I can do that. Make it bigger or smaller. Did I think about food? Yes. Did I think about pizza? Yes. Did I think about bananas? Yes. So I've done this now. Complete. Now I get some points. Right, and I'm getting closer to level three now. Okay, you can customize your own rewards, which is also very cool. You can build your own, so you can really customize this. And it's great, for example, if you're working on your English, what do you want to do today? Do you want to finish reading an article? Do you want to watch a movie with subtitles? Do you want to finish watching a TED talk? Do you want to write down a couple of example sentences? For example, maybe you're maybe 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 you're finish you're finishing one of my courses, and you want to write down some example sentences. So you do that. You write that down as a task, right? So maybe it's just watch a lesson, watch, watch lesson, lesson six of. Oops, can't capitalize. Don't capitalize of of Luke's. English Brain course. You can check out that course, by the way, in the link in the description. Watch lesson six of Luke's English Brain course. Okay, now, is that very difficult? Eh, we'll leave it like this. After I watch it, I get a little reward. Yeah, it reminds me to do it, and it gives me a positive incentive to do it, a positive reason to do it. Very cool, I think. Very cool, I think. 
I want to see only the ones that are due. I can make that disappear. Did I do that today? Yes. Did I do this today? Ah, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's not going well. Oh, no. Oh, no. My health. Oh, I'm dying. Ah. It's turning red. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. Careful. You're losing health. Level up to fully heal. Buy a potion from the rewards column to restore 15 health points. Very cool. So you can actually go down levels and go up levels. I've gone down a few times. I've gone up continuously over the last few. I've been using this for a few years. So that's it. That's how it works. One thing we won't get into, but I'll just mention quickly, is that you can start a party. That means a group of people, a team, and they're doing their goals, you're doing your goals. They don't have to be the same goals, but you can collaborate on what your points do. For example, a quest or mission will come up. A horrible, monstrous creature has crawled out of a crack in the earth, and it must be destroyed. All right, let's kill it together. So we both join up as a team, and our points together slowly kill the monster over a period of maybe two weeks. It's a raid. It's a raid, right? So basically think of this as an MMORPG game, except your life are the missions and tasks, the things that you want to do in your life. It's very, very fun. So that's basically it. What I would encourage you to do I would encourage you to, if this is the kind of thing that works for you, take a look at it. I'm not saying you have to do this. This is just an interesting tool. I want to share it because it works for me. I use it for my goals and my habits. I don't know why it works for me exactly. I like the way it's organized. Simple to-do lists just don't quite do it for me. I have that habits one there. That's very important. And the dailies, very important. So. If that kind of thing is the kind of thing that works for you, check it out. I think it's a good tool for setting goals, whether that's finishing lessons in courses, wink, wink, or watching YouTube videos, or writing examples, or practicing for IELTS, or speaking practice, recording yourself speaking discussion questions, or reading two pages of a book, whatever it is, see if that can be part of your habit loop to stick with English because this is one of the big issues people face to give up too soon. But if you make yourself accountable and you give yourself little rewards along the way, you're going to find that it sticks. And this is just one way to do it. So I encourage you to check it out. All right. That's it for this. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure that you also subscribe or follow and also check out my full English courses in the links in the description. Okay, so what do you guys think about this? What do you guys think about this app? Do you think it's cool? Do you think it's boring? I'd like your thoughts. I, I, I use it every single day. I'm, I'm no joke. I use it every day. I'm not just randomly finding stuff and recommending it you guys to you guys because I'm running out of things to say. It's not like that at all. I use this every day because I'm a big fan of it. Right now, I'm a level 71 mage. I, uh, I have a pumpkin and a turkey and all kinds of cool stuff. I know you guys can't really see this, but this is my this is my my app, right? This is my character. I know you can't see it clearly, but there's my oh, there's my pet turkey. There's my pumpkin that I'm sitting on. I've got a crazy hat. I've got I've got level, tons of money. How much money? I have, I have 2.61 thousand gold. Oh my god. So much money. I'm rich. I'm rich in fake money. And I've got my, my dailies. I've got my long, very long to-do list. Very, very long. You can see very, 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 very long to-do list. 
And I actually use rewards for taking notes. You make your own rewards, but you can also use that for notes if you want to keep track of ideas. So let's see. Today, did I did I read? That's one of my things. Yes, I did. Did I do some physical activity? Not yet, but I'm but I'm going to later. So I'm not going to touch that one yet. Did I do intermittent fasting today? Yes, I did. I'm going to tap yes for that. And so I get some bonus there. And I'm working my way toward level 72. Excited to get there. Pretty cool stuff. So I think it's fun. Sorry, I just joined. What app are you talking about? It is called Habitica. 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 H-A-B-I-T. H-A-B-I-T-I-C-A. Habitica. Habitica. It's very cool. Okay, so if you guys have questions now, let me know what they are. How do I use pardon? Okay, that's a question. Well, maybe. Uh, 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 watching films with English subtitles works for me. Okay, that's good. Luba says it's interesting. I will try the app. I did the to-do list and wrote it down on paper today. It looks like you read my mind. I think this app will be useful. Yep, some people feel silly using an app that's a game. I personally like to be silly, so that's perfect for me. Luke, I wanted to give you the thanks because I'm really improving my spoken English watching your videos, especially the video of the books that you suggested. Well, thank you, Casey Master. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, um, what else do we have here? This is not a recording, Ishwood. Maybe you're a recording. You ever think about that? How dare you accuse me of being a recording? How dare you? <laughs> uh, Koji Ta Takeda, finally I'm watching your channel live. Hooray! Hip, hip, hooray. Well, hopefully you have some good questions, guys, because I haven't seen too many questions yet. And so I'm I'm uh, fully capable of talking about something and going away. It's up to you guys. Is it an app for smartphones? You can use it on your phone. You can use it on your computer, both. I use it mostly on my phone. Mm-mm-mm. Are you holding the fort? What was the question earlier that I saw? I've only seen one question, which is shocking. Usually there are 10,000 questions for me to check after I talk about something. I only see one. Guys, make sure, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button as well. That's very important. I would really appreciate if you could hit the like button. That would be wonderful. Hit like. And I don't know if you know this, but if you hit like with your nose instead of your finger, it actually counts twice, believe it or not. That's true. That's true. Where can I pass CPE exam? I actually don't know. I don't know about that. Where you can pass it. Oh, maybe there's a testing center, something like that. Hmm? Could be. Where, where, are the, where, 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 questions? Koji says, it's 4 a.m. here, by the way. My God, Koji. My God. 4 a.m. How can it be 4 a.m.? It's 325 here. Hmm, okay. I need some help. I can't go on like this. It can't go on like this. What is it? Keep up the live sessions. Greetings from Tijuana. Hey, thank you, German Lopez. Much obliged. Much obliged. Do you think that learning a new language can change your mindset? I do. Maybe I can talk about that a little bit. How are you with all this quarantine stuff? Well, it's definitely getting better. I'm now able... It was very serious in New York for a long time. I'm now able to go out, at least for walks. Uh, not all the businesses are open, but it's definitely much improved from what it was before. Much, much, much improved. Uh, before it felt like indoors, nothing going on outside, everything closed. It felt like I was living in black and white, like there was no 
no color in my in my life. Can I do black and white here? How do I do that? Oh yes, no color in my life. Everything was dull and gray and depressing. Even my water, which is normally green, is just gray. How sad. How depressing. But now it's getting much better. I feel things are definitely brighter now. Things are things are things are getting brighter. But 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 not not too bright. Not too bright. Things are Ah, okay. Things are good. Things are good. 427 in Japan. Ah, okay. Someone wrote, damn, Japan. <laughs> what does that mean? What does it mean? <laughs> All right, I'm going to talk about Lolly Lolly's question because I think it's a good one, and it's interesting. It's very general. But, guys, pop in some questions, uh, and we'll and I will get to them after this. <laughs> So, Lolly Lolly says, do you think that learning a new language can change your mindset? And the answer is, is yes, but it's different for each person. And the best way I know to communicate it is to talk a little bit about my experience of seeing others, right? Because others are windows for me to understand how people think and how people improve. So, I'll give a couple of examples. First example I'd like to talk about is my wife. So when she and I first met, she didn't really like English, she didn't really speak English even, and she gradually began to speak it more as we got got married and after we dated for a while. But then after coming to the United States from China, she began to realize, oh, this is an important part of life in America. If I have really good English, that will be a window into opportunities, right? Because if you're here and you don't have really good English and you have really bad English, your, your opportunities are limited. But if your opportunities, if you want to have really good opportunities, if you have really good English, you can get that. You can have access to tons of possible jobs, more friends, discussion groups, all kinds of things. So I think she realized that, wow, I really need to focus on this. So she did. But as a result of that, she began to realize, oh, I'm improving my English a lot. That's giving me all kinds of new opportunities, career, friend, friends, everything, right? Uh, uh, events I'm being invited to, new friends I'm making that I wouldn't have made if my English weren't weren't good enough, and uh, jobs, all that kind of stuff. But then, wait a second. So what if I start improving other things about myself? What if I start working on other aspects of me? Maybe I'll learn a new skill. Maybe I'll sign up for a course on Udemy, right? So she started doing that. Well, maybe I'm interested in yoga. I'll learn that. So now I think she's become a kind of learning, passionate, passionate learning person, whereas she wasn't really that before. Now she's very passionate about learning and improving herself in general. And it's honestly very inspiring to me. I look at her and think, wow, look, this person is constantly trying to improve, get better, get smarter, get wiser. And it's, it's an inspiration. So the beginning of that journey, I think, for her was the language part. Now I have another friend and actually posting a video about this uh, on the other channel so make sure you check that out about someone who grew up at a young age learning English right but who then went on to learn not only English but also uh, also Romanian and also French and is now beginning to learn Japanese and he if you watch that interview you'll see it he told me, this is what he said, this is something that once you start doing it becomes a process in your mind. Like your brain is now able to handle learning languages. It builds out a structure for learning. So whether you're learning English or French or whatever, it's easier and easier over time to pick up the words, to pick up the grammar as well. And so it changes your mind in that way too in addition to opening up way more opportunities, right? And he said, basically, 
if you don't know at least English and you can't speak it well, you are imprisoned by your country and your language and you can't get outside of it. And if you're okay with that, okay. But if you want to access the world, if you want to make international friends, if you want to have many career opportunities, then you have to have a high level of English. And that's just the reality of the world right now. That's the reality. So I think those two examples are good. There are many others, but I think the answer to the question is absolutely yes, but in different ways for different people, right? And there are so many stories out there. I've started interviewing people for that reason because I think it's an interesting thing to learn about how people think and how learning languages affects the way that they think, the way that they develop, and the way that they see the world. Very interesting. Great question, Lolly Lolly. Thanks a lot, guys, if you haven't already. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Also, subscribe and check out my full courses in the links in the description. Okay, good question. With learning English, you will finally beg for your live to the police when they realize that you are... What? I don't understand what that means. Um, weird thing to say. Luke, could you pop up the word blue as a mood? Um, yeah, sure. Blue means kind of sad. I feel blue. You look blue. I like listening to the blues. <laughs> Sorry, Anderson, that's the answer. <laughs> that's an easy one. <laughs> uh... Koji says, your English is really easy for me to understand. Do you speak super clearly for us, or do you speak like that all the time? A lot of people ask me that question. Generally speaking, the answer is I kind of speak like that all the time in a way. Eh, I can talk about that. I haven't heard Blue Monday. What does Blue Monday mean? Koji Takeda says, your English is really easy for me to understand. Do you speak super clearly for us or you speak like that all the time? One thing that I remember very clearly from spending four years uh, in China teaching English without going back to the United States and even really talking to my family that much. We mostly talk by email, <laughs> frankly is when they, they met me, again, after four years, they said, you speak kind of differently. You speak really, really clearly. You're really pronouncing things very clearly. Why are you talking like that? And I think to an extent I had got used to just saying things very clearly, saying what I mean, not very slowly, but maybe a little more slowly, and trying to enunciate so that people can understand. I think I had got so used to doing that with students that I tended to do it with everybody. So I actually think I changed a little bit as a result of becoming an English teacher. And I know I'm not the only one who's experienced that. I've talked to a lot of English teachers and many of them have told me the same thing. Now, I don't think it's much. I don't think it's much. I don't think it's a huge amount of change that I've made from then to now. I think it's very small. And if you had heard me talk 10 years ago, you would have said maybe the same thing. If I were talking to you, but if I were not, you might have said, wait a second, what are you talking about? And let me explain another piece of that. Understanding someone, Koji, is not only about their speed and not only about how much they enunciate. That is probably 15% of understanding. In fact, if someone is saying exactly what I'm saying, but saying it much more clearly and blended together, or sorry, much more quickly and blended together, you would probably have about the same level of comprehension. Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit less. Now, what's the other piece? What's the other 75%? You might have heard me say this before. 
But the other 75%, and a much more important part, it's the reason you don't understand native English speakers. And that is references. That is, when I'm speaking with my brothers or I'm speaking with other native English speakers, I'm going to naturally pop out with local idioms, expressions, references to movies and film, things in our culture that I know that they know, that they know that I know. And it's those references, those idioms, those expressions, those things that are in the culture that we both know, those shared things that makes it difficult for people who aren't in the culture to understand. I understand every single word you just said, but what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> right? That's the question. Well, he speaks clearly, but I don't know what he's saying. That's because he's referencing things that you don't know because you didn't grow up in that country. And that's the fact. And so if you want to get exposure to that, you have to expose yourself to it. One of the things that really blows m my mind and drives me crazy is someone says, I don't understand uh, the, all of the references that people make to American culture. And I say, uh, do you read books? No. Do you play video games? No. Do you watch a lot of uh, English TV shows? Sometimes, but no, not really. Do you read articles online? No, no, not really. Do you listen to podcasts? No, no not really. Well, then, wh what? The, the, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> How could you expect anything else unless you jump into the swimming pool of the culture and start swimming around, start playing English video games, start watching regular TV shows on a regular basis that you enjoy or movies, start reading articles online, start listening to podcasts, start reading to books or listening, reading to books, reading to books. What is that? Reading books or listening to, to audio books. How can you expect to get those references? So don't plan anything. Don't get ready for it. Don't say, okay, let me make a schedule and then I'm going to get into that stuff. Don't do any of that stuff. It's, it's, it's a waste of time. Just immediately, starting in five minutes, jump into it. Find what you like and stick with it. Find the parts that make you happy, that you enjoy. And you're going to start picking up those things in the culture. You're going to start picking up the references because you saw that TV show, because you played that video game, because you read that article because you listen to that podcast, you will know more things about the English language culture. It's extremely important. And when I hear people say, why? So often it, dry, it just drives me crazy because it's, it's, to me, it seems so obvious, right? But it's important. Anyway, it's important. Okay. It's in very, it's very, very important. Uh, one thing I want to mention though, is that there are circles to this, right? There's the very local circle of your friends. And they might have inside references in language that people who are not your friends won't know. So if someone is listening to me have a conversation with my brother, even an American English speaker, 30% of the conversation will be a mystery to them. They will not understand what we're talking about. We grew up together. We have so many inside secret references that other people don't know that we know naturally and when other people Americans English speakers hear it they go what are you guys what are you guys talking about what is that right so that's one level that's one layer so you're dealing with that as an English learner you're hearing people also talk with people who are very close to them and they have a circle of inside knowledge right or inside jokes or inside whatever references that you don't know then it gets a little bigger then you might have your area. Maybe, maybe. Sometimes it's city-based. Certain people in a city have their own references. Maybe it's a Californians, Southern California. There are cultures or subcultures or groups as well that are a little bigger than just a circle of friends where you might have inside jokes or inside references too. Then it gets a little bigger. Let's say Americans. Okay, Americans, we have our own culture. We grow up in America, so we have a shared experience of the school system shared experience of television programs, news programs, things that we watched as kids, 
I can reference something that I watched as a kid, like a cartoon, and I know that another American who's in my generation knows that same cartoon, and if I make a joke about it, I know they'll get it. But someone from the UK probably will not get it because they didn't see that as a kid. So that's another level. Then there's the generational part where my parents don't understand a lot of what I'm talking about when I'm talking to people in my generation and I don't understand what 15 year olds are talking about. So you see this is very complicated. There's a lot of things here, a lot of sort of circles that get bigger and bigger and a lot of levels. The circles are friends and family, my subculture or my group or my region, my nation, my country, my cultural identity in my country. I am an American, a shared experience I have with Americans. Then there's generational, which is the sort of levels, right? There's my generation, which, which is millennials. We're called millennials. And there's Generation X, and there are many generations. We understand different things. We have our own inside jokes, memes, and things like that, right? Then there's an even bigger one, which is the English-speaking world, right? In the English-speaking world, maybe let's say that's native English speakers who know common things that are within the language that are pretty broad. That would include a lot of phrasal verbs. That would include a lot of idioms and expressions that are not specific to a country. We know many of them as native English speakers as part of our education, reading literature that's common to all native English speakers, maybe knowing things that are just sort of floating around in the language not specific to a country. We share that. So when you come into the language to try to learn it and you say, why don't I understand? Don't say you're talking too fast. That's why, because it's not why. It might be 15%, but the rest of that giant 75% is something else, <laughs> right? The 75, what, what, my, my math is wrong. <laughs> I've, been, I've been doing the wrong math the whole time. What am I saying? <laughs> 85, 85, what am I doing? My math is off. I'm an English teacher, not a math teacher. Don't ask me to do simple subtraction. How dare you? I think you understand what I mean. Let's say the biggest piece is the references, but it's not that simple. It's not like I need to learn all English references. I need to learn all idioms. No, you need to swim around in cultures. You need to understand that things are different gener generationally. You need to understand that even when you're a master of English, you will hear a conversation between two people who are close friends and you still won't understand what is going on. And that's just part of it. And sometimes I watched an English video yesterday that someone sent me about some very in-depth topic. And after I watched the video, I said to them in a chat, I don't understand anything I just heard. <laughs> I understood every word, but I don't understand what's going on because I don't know the background, the history, the industry, right? There's so much of that. So just jump in and swim around and don't come to me for math lessons. That's the lesson. That's the lesson. All right, guys, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe, and don't forget to check out my full courses in the links in the description. If you're interested in improving your English, that is where to go. I uh, have full courses on how to think in English, improving your pronunciation, the flow between your words to sound more natural, a full 15-hour course on English in general, mastering native English, bunch of different courses, including four courses about English slang. You can learn over 200, I think it's 240 English expressions with in-depth explanations of each check out those courses in the links in the description. Thanks for the question, Koji. It's a good one. Uh, uh, I appreciate it. It's an excellent question. I wish that I wish that more people had insightful questions like that. Did you do you read something here, Alex? Do I read something? No. I am just talking. Did you catch what I said there? I think I said I think I said 15 and 75, didn't I? Is that what I said? I said 15 and 75 instead of, yeah, I'm an idiot. 
I'm an idiot. I'm so stupid. Where there's a missing 10%, but I'm going to keep that 10% for myself. That 10% is my 10%. The, that's, the, the, that's the Luke's 10%. All right? Okay? All right. Uh, let's see if there are any other questions here. Champ. Yeah, man. Blue man. Sad and depressed. I understand. I can understand any English unless it's British. Okay. Bloody hell. It is a prof deformation. Not sure what you mean by that, Luba. You have to help me out. To emphasize the level of perfection of a craft work, can I use the word something for instance isn't it something uh sergio or sergio it is you can say isn't that something emphasize i wouldn't say necessarily perfection something is good or interesting or unique or special you say wow that's really something wow that's really something that's really something yeah when you're trying to get into a conversation with teens. Hi there, fellow kids. Yeah, exactly, that's me, walking into a conversation with 15 year olds. Hello there, fellow children. <laughs> Let us talk about memes and uh, uh, Fortnite. <laughs> and the PUBG. Have you heard about the new PUBG thing? <laughs> well, See you guys later. <laughs> That's me talking to teenagers who are cool. I agree with what you say. I speak Italian and I lived in Italy for a while. I feel different when I speak with my Italian friends and my personality and behavior is not the same. Very interesting. I've read that too. I've read that as well. And memes. Don't forget about the memes to learn English culture. Absolutely. Eloy, I don't know how to say your name correctly, but memes are very important. Um, especially, I think, for younger, younger generation communication. Memes are a really important part because they're always referenced. And I have a video coming out, I think, next two, in two weeks about PewDiePie and how he sort of... I mean, he, his memes were one of his pathways into the language he has a show called meme review you speak clearly because you are a teacher your profession affects the way you speak i think that's probably right i don't think that's wrong okay any other questions guys do you guys have any other questions Hello, Mary McCain. Good eye there. Welcome to the show. Today, we're talking about all kinds of stuff. It's my bad Australian accent. It's a bit schizophrenic, isn't it? Uh, what's schizophrenic? I'm schizophrenic? Are you calling me schizophrenic, Lolly Lolly? How dare you? How dare you? One of the things on my to-do list today is finish mom's website. My mother is working on her new website. I'm helping her with it. I have to finish that. It's on my Habitica to-do list. I've attended American high school and I was surprised that students don't learn about their own language grammar. What do you think about that? It's huh, a good question. I like it. Talking about the culture with wide spectrum of folk Americans has sucked a lot of shit as well. Not quite sure I understand. But I think Paul's question is interesting. Uh, Mary McCain, you missed, oh, you missed a whole lot. It's very sad. You missed everything, and you, but you didn't miss me drinking water. 
And you miss me going into black and white as I drink water. Mm. Can I answer this question in black and white? Why not? All right. Black and white question of the day. I've attended American... Uh, Paul Pelier says, I've attended American high school and I was surprised that students don't learn about their own grammar. What do you think about that? Now, this is, I think, both true and untrue in a certain way. I think it's true in the sense that we don't often learn in a very systematic way, except for maybe a certain small period of time in English, in English class. This is an adjective. This is a preposition. This is how these pieces work together. Now, there are different education systems. There are private schools, charter schools, public schools, homeschool. I was homeschooled, and then I went to a public high school. And so there, there's a lot of variation here. So I wouldn't say 100% no, they don't, but I would agree that there's a lack of emphasis on those specific grammatical pieces in the public education system. And while it might come up in a few lessons here and there, or there might be a, 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 some modules on that in a certain year of school, definitely not a focus. Like in the education systems of other countries with other languages, learning the grammar of your language. So, if I were to walk up to someone on the street in Times Square near where I live, I would say to them, what is a preposition? And I would get probably, my guess, 80% of people would say, I don't know, what is a preposition? What is that? I think they would know adjective because that one's so common in the language. But if I said, what's a preposition? They would say, preposition? I don't know. They would just guess something. And then the remaining percentage would, would probably know. Something like that. Something like that. And if you got really in-depth, right? And you said, what is a subjunctive mood? Or if you said, what is a prepositional phrase, right? What is an adverbial? What is it? What is a modal verb, huh? What is an intransitive verb? Tell me. They would, they would say, stop asking me questions, strange man. Go away. I would say, okay, <laughs> goodbye. Uh, I did that. I went up to people in Times Square and I asked them, these questions and most of them did not know. You can check out that video if you like. Now, does that mean they're not learning grammar? The answer to that I think is no. It's just learn in a different way. It's learned more practically through practice, reading, exercises, and feedback. So while it might not be often as systematic as what you're suggesting, you're writing short essays. You're learning how to compose an essay. Using all of those pieces, it's not like you're not using prepositions and intransitive verbs. You are. You're using them. But you might not know what it is called when you use it. What's more important? Well, I would say knowing how to use something is much more important than knowing, memorizing what it's called, right? So I would say it's incorrect to say that we don't learn it. We do learn it just in a different way. The education system does teach it just in a different way. Punctuation. How to use punctuation. You practice punctuation when you're composing sentences, when you're answering discussion questions, right? Many students in all grades have to do a lot of writing. They then usually have to base that writing on something they've read. So they're getting information and examples of good writing. They're processing it. They're writing their own thoughts or summaries or whatever it is about that. And this is through all grades of school, once they can write. And then they're getting feedback on that from the teacher. You use this word incorrectly. Circle this word. This is a weird phrase. You used it the wrong way. Punctuation mark. Incorrect. This whole sentence sounds unclear and could be simplified. Right? Slice this sentence in two. Put a period here instead of a comma. What is that? It's grammar. It's grammar. So the entire education process is learning grammar throughout the years. 
without that emphasis on this is called this, that is called that. That might be forgotten. That is probably forgotten if it is learned at all. Do I think it's important to learn those things, the names of things? No, I don't. I don't think that someone has to know what that's called. If you're a native English speaker and you know how to write well and you don't know what those pieces are called, those grammatical pieces are called, and you can't explain the grammar to someone, I think it doesn't matter. If you can express yourself clearly and use it correctly, the usage correctly, good. And I think overall the education system does provide that. Gives people the ability to use grammar naturally in correct context, either in writing or speaking or whatever it may be. This is, by the way, in addition to the fact that they're growing up in a native English speaking country, it's their first language, and so they're speaking it correctly because it's all around them and they've learned it from the time that they were a baby. Right? Now, should you learn it? Well, for the purposes of understanding what someone like me is explaining when they explain things about prepositions or phrasal verbs, I think you should. Just because it's useful if I say, all right, now let me, let me teach you about a phrasal verb. You say, phrasal verb? What the heck is a phrasal verb? So first, it is useful to know what that is. So for you guys, I would say, yeah, learn the names. That will help you grab onto ideas more quickly when you hear those ideas being talked about by a teacher in a video or some book that you're reading. It can help you. But is it the most important thing? No, it's still not the most important thing for you. It's good to know. It's good to know that that's what it's called so that when you hear someone say that preposition, you know what they mean when they say that preposition because you know the word preposition. That's good. That's good. But the most important thing is that you know how to use the different prepositions, that you have a deep understanding of how to put a sentence together so that it's natural, right? I have so many times heard someone say, yes, I know exactly what a preposition is. Oh, yes, I know exactly what an adverb is. I know, oh, I know all the pieces of grammar. And then I see a written composition, and it looks like it's been written by a second grader. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen that. In fact, I don't think I've ever in my entire life, and I've been working with students for over nine years in my entire career of English language teaching. I have never had someone hand me a piece of writing and say, read this, and I've looked at it and said, oh my God, it's perfect. You didn't make any mistakes. You demonstrated a perfect understanding of grammar, usage, everything, amazing. Here it is back. Never, ever, never, never. There have been some that have been close, but by and large, there's too much of a focus on all the names and understanding the ideas, and I, oh, I know what this piece is, but can you put it all together? And that should be the focus. That should be the emphasis. And it's mind-blowing to me how even English learners who are very good at speaking, even very good speakers of English, are often terrible writers. Terrible. So I think you should work on your writing. I think you should become a good writer. I think it's very important. Because if you're a good writer, it's going to actually help you become a better communicator. People will take you seriously when they read your emails. And it's also going to help inform your ability to speak in English. Very important. Very, very important. By the way, guys, I have three English writing courses coming out this year. Three of them. And I think, oh, and one grammar course. Yes, four courses that are relevant to this. So if you haven't already, make sure you check out my links in the description. You can check out my full courses. I think they're pretty good. A lot of people like them. So you can check out those courses. We have, I have almost 50,000 students taking my courses. Actually, I have more than 50,000. If I count all the platforms, more than 50,000 students taking my, my courses. Average reviews, 4.5 stars out of 5. I think I'm one of the highest rated teachers on all the platforms. And so I would recommend that you check out the links in the description. They're not that expensive. If you're investing in yourself and you really want to improve, check out my courses. Or if you're on my website, you can actually sign up for a membership, meaning that you can pay a certain amount each month automatically and access all of my courses 
for that small amount. So check that out. Again, link in the description. There is a 20% discount if you click on the link because you're watching here. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button. That would be great. And also subscribe. Okay. Hopefully that answers your question, uh, Paul Palier. Uh, that, that's it's a great question, Mr. Twitch. Mr. or is it Dr. Twitch? Let me bring my color back. I don't know why I did that. It's a weird thing to do. Why do I do things like that? How was teaching you while homeschool? How was te Oh, um, I was... My mother taught me for the first few years, and then for a lot of it, I was kind of self-taught. Still had to take exams, but it went well. <laughs> when I got to high school, it was very, very easy and boring. Um, Russians learn Russian grammar for at least eight years. What? Now I am talking about speaking a new language. Lolly, lolly, why do you keep saying the same thing? <laughs> many times lolly lolly could I ask you a couple questions about mental health maybe Mary and lolly lolly can get in touch later I don't think lolly lolly wants to put her email address in the chat though probably I, I if I were lolly lolly I would not want to I would avoid that but there's got to be a way to connect oh yeah Facebook group Go to my Facebook page and I'll give you my email. Oh, Lolly Lolly has provided the solution. Great. Question. How could I practice some spoken English? I tried chat roulettes, chat rooms, and etc. There are only excuse ex, uh, per, pervert people. Uh. Well, one way to find a language learning partner is uh, Hello Talk is not bad. You can check out Hello Talk. You can uh, find a language learning partner. Are there perverts there? Maybe some, but uh, you could try it. Works for some people, doesn't work for others. I'm not, I was affiliated with Hello Talk. I'm not anymore, but still good. Okay. I would say connect with Lolly Lolly in the WhatsApp group, but what can you do? Do you have another special media? I have an error in my Facebook account. Guys, are you guys don't need to talk about this here, right? Let me give you a hint, Mary. Lolly Lolly is not human. She's a robot. She's an artificial highly advanced artificial intelligence. She can't she can't answer phone calls or anything like that. It is one of 1,000 cases. Really? Oh, you mean about homeschooling? Huh? This? This is one in 1,000 cases? Yeah, homeschooling does have various outcomes. Some people do well with it. Some people don't do well with it. Highly variable. Highly variable. Hi, Luke. I want to ask how to learn connected speech. Ooh, a good question. I like it. Let me, can I, let me, let me make an example for myself first so that we can do this correctly. So pardon me if I sit here in silence for a second. <laughs> Lolly Lolly says she's not a robot. That's what robots say. That's the first thing they say. I like Lolly Lolly. Lolly Lolly is a great participant to have in a live stream. I, I honestly couldn't live without Lolly Lolly in live classes. I appreciate your presence, Lolly Lolly. I genuinely, genuinely do. That is not a joke. I'm serious. Um, I 
think I think you're great. I think you're the best. I also think the other thing. <laughs> no worries, Mary. All right. So, Yasin Asnsam says, Hi, Luke. I want to ask how to learn connected speech. Now, this is a big topic. It's covered in one of my courses. And in that course, we focus on how to jump from one word to the next, how to connect consonant sounds together, all that stuff. Blending, jumping, all of that stuff covered in that course. So check that course out. It's uh, how to sound like a, a native English speaker. Check that course out. But I can talk about one piece of it. And I want to use a simple example to talk about it. Okay, so I'm going to say a sentence. It's actually a question. And I want you to listen. And then we'll talk about why it sounds like that. When are you moving in, Deborah? 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 Okay, now, what are you noticing here? It flows, right? Very well. You might think, oh, that sounds so natural. What happens if I just read one word at a time? When are you moving in, Deborah? When are you moving in, Deborah? That sounds very robotic, and it's not good. When are you moving in, Deborah? Now, you might at first think, wait a second, it's too fast. It's not about speed. It's not about speed. Listen, I'll do it very slowly. When are you moving in, Deborah? When are you moving in? <laughs> you can hear that it's not about speed. So it's actually very simple here. What can we do? I can itch my face, and then we can think about the connections between these. What is the connection? In this particular example, there are no unvoiced sounds. A voiced sound is when you uh, mm, 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 use your voice to make a sound. Shh, k, s, unvoiced. Th, z, mm, er, voiced. Using my voice. Okay. When we have voiced words, and especially when you have voiced sounds at the end of one word and the beginning of the next, all you do is don't stop your voice. Now, this can be a little weird if you don't do it correctly, so that's why I would recommend checking out that course because you have to do it right. But the basic idea, the basic idea is don't stop your voice. Keep your voice going. When are, when are, when are, when are. Notice, no, no, my voice has not stopped. Not when are, when are, when are, when are, when are you. Because there are no, oh, bumped my computer. There are no unvoiced sounds here. Now, if there is an unvoiced sound, okay, we stop at the unvoiced sound. Okay. If someone says, Hit me. Okay, hit. Hip, hip. There's a stop there. Hit me. Don't hit me, please. But if someone said that, there would be a stop because there is an unvoiced sound there. But for this one, there are no unvoiced sounds. When are you? Now, we still have to place stress on the right words. We wouldn't say, when are you? When are you? Can't be exactly the same. When are you? When are you? When are you? And then moving moving focus on that because it's the sort of important word in the sentence when are you moving in now we pause a little bit because there's a comma there before deborah the deborah is the name of the person but we can say in and we can carry the n as our pause instead of actually pausing we can do a voiced pause which is mm, Deborah like that I still haven't stopped my voice when are you moving in Deborah <laughs> see I haven't stopped so you could continue it like that when are you moving in Deborah when are you moving in Deborah 
Now that's how I would say it natively to Deborah. When are you, when are you moving in, Deborah? You might say, okay, ah, too fast, right? Okay, maybe that is too fast. I've said it too fast, okay? But many native English speakers will say it fast. But the thing that makes it native is not the fastness of it. It's the flow between the sounds. When are you moving in, Deborah? 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 Okay, so hopefully that's clear. Hopefully that makes sense. And if you guys have any questions about this or if you want to learn more about it, check out, leave a comment, or check out my full courses, especially the one about sounding like a native English speaker in the links in the description. And don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, uh, and uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Aaron Q says, yo, what's, what's up, man? Well, man, can't say that there's much going on other than me doing this live stream. Mini Kins 10 says, do you help with voice acting? Nope, I don't. I don't. I've never had the chance. Yes, Yasin, it's a great question. Thank you for asking. All right, guys, I think we're going to call it a day. Thank you so much for all the great questions. Not that many questions at the start, but after we got into it, we got some really good questions, and I appreciate that. We're going to have a few more live streams next week, two or three, uh, I promise. If you haven't already, again, I would deeply appreciate if you would hit the like button. That tells the algorithms, hey, this is good, and then more people can come to watch. That makes me happy. Also, don't forget to subscribe so that you can see future videos. There is a video posting, if you're watching this live, tonight. Okay, it'll post at 11 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on June 12th, 2020. If you're watching this in 2040, wow, I'm glad my video survived this long. Hello, future people. I hope everything is is better than now in the future because things are really stupid right now in 2020. So hello. Uh, but if this is way better than 2060, then I 2040, I can't imagine what it would be like where you are. So maybe I'm the lucky one. Who knows? Maybe there is no internet in 2040. I'm thinking too much about this. Too much. All right. So guys, again, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. Check out the courses seriously. If you're interested, if you if you want, if you think, oh, it's still, each course is too expensive, do the um, do the monthly membership. You can sign up for every month, and it'll automatically do a billing thing every month, and you can access all of the courses every month, all of them. So it's pretty cool. All right, guys, have a good one. Thanks again, and I will talk to you all in the next one, or see you in the see you in the.